Okay, Nashville, Memphis, or I know I know a little of Tennessee, um, and Jesta, I watch your videos and testimony concerning recovered memories. I am from Oklahoma. Oh, okay. I have a friend in Oklahoma and from Nashville. Mel's from Nashville. I read um, a comment I got today that on my on my YouTube or no, actually it was on was not on mine. It was on um, Anthony Padilla. Um, you know, interviewed me. And maybe you've seen that, but this was the comment. I was a victim of my grandfather, my dad as well. He had repressed memories from his trauma and was great friends with his father. He just didn't remember the abuse. It took me coming out about what happened to me for him to recover his own memories. I never blame my dad, but a lot of people do. Um, but her dad didn't know because he had not remembered. That just was really a sad, uh, sad situation. But in the other way, the um, the woman who who wrote this, her. Um, recovery enabled her father to recover. So you really can recover at any age. Mel says um, she was introduced, she or he, and I, I don't know which pronoun you use, introduced to, um, and, uh, introduced to me through Anthony. Okay, I'll try to start talking a little better. I'm going to put my glasses on. Yeah, the pictures of all of you. Oh, she. Okay. Thanks, Mel, for telling me. Um, the pictures of all of you are so small, I can't really tell much from them. Uh, I am having a good day. It is wonderful weather where I live. Summertime is great here. Um, it is like in the 60s and 70s. I love going on walks this time of year. Sometimes it gets to the 80s and people here say it's hot. Occasionally it gets to the hundreds and we do have air conditioning. I'm so spoiled. I got air conditioning just for those few days a year. Greetings from Brazil. Oh, that's great. Daniel, Daniel from Brazil. Thanks for coming. Thanks to all of you for coming. Do you have any specific questions about my films? Do you want me to talk more about things that help me heal? What, what do you want from me this time? Daniel, and you're a survivor, 45 years old. Oh, yes, you can ask a question in private. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I will um, I, I will make arrangements so you can talk to me right after this, um, which will be in about an hour. Yeah, and I, I do understand your question more that you adopted a, a child who's a toddler. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it is appropriate to talk to me individually about that. Best way to access repressed memories. One thing I want to say regarding that is you need to be in a safe enough place to do so. Your body holds those memories until you have sufficient safety to remember. And so one thing to do is to make your life more safe. I talked to a 15-year-old a girl in India. She, was, she said she was working on a documentary or working on, she wanted to film an interview with me for a school project. 
I just assumed it was a, um, it was for college. But then when I talked to her, I found out she's just 15 years old. She's, you know, in school. And her story was, oh, she had seen my film two years before, two years before. So she was 13. She had, um, I don't know if it was a film or something else, but she had felt empowered enough to say, it's not right. What my dad's doing to me is not right. What my cousins are doing to me, it's not right. And so she now is safe to the extent she's no longer being sexually abused, but she wasn't, you know, here probably she'd be, she might be put in foster care or something there. She, um, she just, um, still lives with her mother and her father who used to sexually abuse her. And they are trying to convince her that what, you know, that the memory she's already had, I mean, that, that she wasn't abused, that what she's saying is not true. So um, what I said to her is you don't want to access more memories. I asked her, when will you be able to move out? She said two years. I said, you don't want more memories during those two years. You just need to survive for those two years. So, um, but one way is, you know, the more safety you have, um, if that means safe living situation, if that means safety as far as knowing you'd be able to support yourself or find more safety for yourself, and then you may remember, um, I, you know, journaling um, is something I have done um, that could be helpful. Um, but I'm just wanting to say, be really careful with yourself because it's so hard when you remember things. Now I remember things, new things occasionally, and uh, it doesn't, I'm okay, but it, it's still not easy. Um, so... Yeah, I read rituals. You're here. Okay, thanks for coming. I know who you are. Um, and okay, so that gave you some information. Sunshine was looking for information about assessing repressed memories. Um, trying to think of something. Well, psychotherapy. I personally, there were when I remembered my mother was involved. I didn't remember until like an hour before I went to a psychotherapy session. It was like my body knew I needed to, um, my body knew I needed, um, I needed that safety. I need to be, I, I didn't need to remember it by myself. And so that's what happened. Oh, thanks for all the hearts. Um, Yeah, it, it takes a long time to remember the abuse and um and and that's okay. And that's okay. Um okay. Oh yes. So my interview with Dr. Vanderkoek, it was oh, I was so excited when I got that interview. And I didn't know for sure. I I got through to Dr. Vanderkoek's assistant and I said that. Dr. Vanderkoek could decide after it was after I showed him an edited, after I edited his interview, and then decide whether or not I could use it. He was he was in Portland, which was where I lived. It was just he was coming to Portland. So I didn't have to pay to, you know, fly out there. And so I used the cinematographer I'd used before, but um yeah, it's um, it's stressful interviewing someone on camera because I was like telling the um, camera people, you know, I was talking about angles and stuff like that. And I, um, but anyway, uh, we, I, I appreciate him letting me interview him then. Oh, okay, so. You're gonna finish my book. Thanks, Ang Ang 
angles. I, I don't know what you want to be called, but, uh, and I'm also, oh, you put yourself in the girl's shoes. Yeah. 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 When, what I like about my book is um, it has trigger warnings throughout. So, and most of it has low trigger warnings. So most of it, you know, like my yoga teacher read only the ones with low trigger warnings. And really you get most of the book that way. You really get all that you would need of the book that way. I put in the high trigger warning, the extremely high trigger warnings. I have three essays, extremely high trigger warnings. And the reason I put those in is some people want to know the details. And now if they want to know details and I don't feel like answering them, I say it's in my book. You can read my book. Okay, Veronica's mom brought her to a boyfriend to live in, oh, brought a boyfriend to live in the house and he was a horrible person. Oh yeah, that that's betrayal, you know, from your mom. And um, yeah, that's very painful. And I want to say, as I put in the interview I did with Anthony that you cannot compare abuse. Different people are different. It's like saying, I, I love chocolate ice cream more than you love chocolate ice cream because you, you can't, um, you can't compare because like I'm different than you're, you are. Yeah. So, um, I, um, I don't want you to compare. I mean, I, I did have her interest of use and every now and then someone's, someone starts to tell me about their bad life. And I go, yeah, this is what happened to me because they're, they're, um, not willing to be somewhat objective about it, but I rarely do that. I mean, like I have a friend who used to do that and I'm, you know, I, yeah. Um, I, after I'd listened to her a while, I'd, I'd say something, you know, that, that this is how my life has been. But the other thing is I have a wonderful life now. And I, I think it's so important not to compare abuse because you can't support each other otherwise. How are you going to support each other? Are you going to find someone with exact same trauma so you can support them? Are you going to get support from someone with exact same trauma? And um, yeah, so it's really important not to compare abuse. It's what I mostly see. I mean, I told you a time. Um, mostly I see people. I, I really, I really I must say, I really hate it if someone compares their trauma to mine. I know mine's really extreme, but that's not the reason I'm telling about it. So you minimize yours. Survivors minimize what they've been through. Uh, most survivors minimize. There's a few exceptions, but most survivors minimize what they've been through. And you can't get well as long as you minimize what you've been through. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm glad you like the documentary. Um, yeah, and you can't get the book. So there may be a few people who just can't afford it. And you can let me know that. And um, you can email me if you can't afford it. But um, and and I'll see what I can do. But um, if you can't afford it, I mean, it's really easy to find. It's on Amazon. It's, um, can someone put the title of it in for me? It's, uh, my life now essays by a child sex trafficking survivor. And you can find it really easily on Amazon. Someone want to be my note taker there? My life now essays by a child sex trafficking survivor by Mary Knight. And um, and also, if someone wants to put my um, website in, MaryKnightProductions.com. Oh yeah, that's a good question, Sunshine. Why 
Do abused children often get abused by more than one, more than the original abuser? Um, I have found that people who are molested by their mother are usually abused by a lot of different people. It's like, I, I, I think there's, you know, if your mother's not going to protect you, there, there's a sense that children who have not been abused have a certain sense of protectiveness over their own body. I didn't have that. And um, I, I didn't know I didn't have it, but I didn't have it. And um, I did not realize I had ownership of my own body. I, I didn't realize that until partway through my first marriage. I mean, you know, I was well into adulthood. Um, so I think that's a part of it. I, I think a part of it is this, the child has a sense there. They, they don't have the sense of ownership of their own body. But another part is if a mother is so sick that she would sexually abuse her child, she oftentimes is sick enough to be around other people who are pedophiles. And so the child is, is partly just crimes of access to the children. Um, yeah. Um, I have not watched Sound of Freedom. I just heard about it from my own psychotherapist last week. Um, I will be interested to see it. Um, Becky, you're such an inspiration and a big part of my, oh, thank you, a big part of my healing. Thank you. Um, do I have any projects coming up? I'm going to put some more things on my YouTube channel, but I don't have any more big projects. Boy, filmmaking is so expensive. Oh, why didn't I develop DID? And I'm also going to go back to um, Jay said, loved your film so powerful and mean, meaningful globally. Oh, thank you so much. And um, your interviews, who's, oh, the, the people I interviewed who said that abusers are only curious and that he said that a young child doesn't suffer. Oh, that was, um, when is anybody disqualified him? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think he's retired. I don't think he has his license anymore. But um, yeah, that was shocking for him to say that and to say it on camera and for him to be one of the founders of the, or one of the, um, he was on the board of the False Memory Syndrome Foundation at the time he said it. It was just appalling that he would say that. I did put Dr. Susie Wyatt right after that. Um, refuting him and her credentials are really better than his and her she is just I just really love her Dr. Susie Wyatt she she practices in Salt Lake City um, but yeah that was horrible for him to say that um, and I am uh, I said some things I was going to go back to Let's see I, one of you made a comment that I was going to go back to, and if you're here and you remember it, please um, put that, please put it in, because I'm thinking I told you I would comment on something, and I haven't. When you were interviewing those who didn't believe you, it was very, yeah, it was horrible. I would never do that again. I would never go interview those people again. I'm so glad I finished. It, it was so hard. And, but, you know, it was, it helped me in the same way it might have helped me to, um, 
confront my parents. I mean, because they reminded me of my parents so much. Oh, why I didn't get DID. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Well, some people might say I have DID. I, I don't, I, I have never been diagnosed that way, but some psychotherapists are more likely to diagnose DID and um, use a looser definition of it. Um, I have friends who are, are DID. I, um, and even I've seen, I've, I have friends who I have seen switch from one personality to another. Um, I, uh, Lorena from um, Long Soul System did, she is a YouTuber and she has made um, just great videos. And in it, you can tell she has distinct personalities. Um, so I'm not a po. I mean, I think DID is, is a great. It's dissociative identity disorder. I think it's a great way that the body helps us um, cope with trauma and torture. Um, and I, I don't think of myself as having it because I'm always. I have always always been aware of where I am. And, and what I'm doing. I never have lost time. Although in a way you could say, you know, I lost time my whole childhood because I was only aware of the abuse while it was going on. And otherwise that would be lost time. Um, what I don't want to do is get into a debate about DID. I believe that DID exists and I have complete respect for people who um, go public about that being their diagnosis. I think there's huge criticism and prejudice against um, DID, and it shouldn't be that way. Oh, Mel, you have to go. Okay. Okay. Um, if someone wants to talk to me, uh, you, you can email me. Um, hey, maybe Red Ritual. Could, oh, bye. You're leaving too. Okay. Bye. Bye. Um, by rituals. Okay. Um, yeah, I know it was, I think Mel was the one who wanted to talk to me later. So, um, yeah. Oh, you are such a he hero, um, for interviewing these people who don't believe you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I kind of feel like, thank you, thank you very much. But I kind of feel like I can look back at myself and I feel like I'm kind of I, I kind of in awe of that per, you know, person I used to be who did that. It's, oh, I'm glad it's done. Oh, you're still here. You were just saying bye to Mel. Okay, Red Rituals, could you put in the chat my, um, my, Website, www.marynightproductions.com, just so everyone else can have that. Oh, it's going, okay. God, you like it, Elisha. Yeah. Elisha, I guess that's how you pronounce. Um, yeah, it does, Becky. It depends on how the body chooses to cope with the memory. And I definitely have PTSD and I definitely have complex PTSD. No question about that. Oh, you don't need to put the link. Just put www. Oh, will it not let you do? Okay, I'm going to do that. Thank you, Red Ritual. Thank you. Thanks for trying. Um, thank you, Jill. Very brave to expose them. Thank you. Oh, if anyone wants to go onto your social media and let people know the live is going on, that's great. I mean, you know, if, if you don't want to, that's fine. But if you want to, that's great. Here, I'll put my email address to. Oh, 
Um, well, let's see. Oh, I... Well, one thing I could do, I could do a reading from my book. I hadn't thought of what part to do. Oh, have you all seen, um, maybe you've seen I, uh, a friend who's an actress um, read my short story that's at the end of my book. And um, it, it's available. I put it on YouTube. Uh, it's hard to sell audio recordings. And so I just put it on YouTube. And um, I think she did great. And she, she uh, my friend Regina, uh, who's an actress, um, she had a friend who had a has a little girl, and she has the little girl angel's voice is by a little girl. So it's I I love that voice. She did good directing the little girl to say it in really sweet ways. Yes, we do become stronger. Yes, together we become stronger for sure. Oh, that's, I'm going to read until there's some questions. I'm going to read psychological benefits of delayed recall. Cause that's a short one. I'm certain that my memories of childhood sexual abuse are true. I did not remember my abuse until I was 37 years old. Even as a child, I had no conscious memory of the atrocities except while they were occurring. When discussing recovered memories like mine, the focus tends to be on their credibility. Since I no longer need to spend my time and energy determining the validity of my recollections, my attention has turned to examining the many ways that delayed recall benefited me. Vacations help us maintain our emotional well-being, especially for those of us with extremely demanding jobs. There is no job as demanding as surviving an abusive childhood. Delayed recall for a child is like taking a vacation from the fear, horror, and shame of the abuse. As a little girl who was molested by both parents, delayed recall gave me a psychological vacation from abuse. Delayed recall enabled me to not only do well in school, but also find comfort there. I'm struggling with this right now. Like, why has it taken me so long? Oh, okay. And you had talked about you in your 40s when you remembered um, uh, at least one of your abusers and, and, or your father abusing you. Yeah, it's... Um, why does it take so long? But I, I've been really frustrated with myself that it took so long. And had I remembered sooner, I could have been protective of, of some children had I known. And so that makes it really bad to me that I didn't remember sooner. But um, I just, I don't think it helps to be angry at yourself. I mean, we survive. I, I think about people getting upset about women who stay in domestic violence situations or men who stay in domestic violence situations. And the thing is, when the person leaves, then you're still mad at them because they stayed. I mean, it, it's kind of like you can't be mad at your younger self because you did get out. That younger self helped you get out. And um, I mean, the fact is you're out, you know, you're, 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 you now know and can now heal. Um, and then the other thing I find is people who remember too soon before they have a way to support themselves, before they, when they're still dependent on their abusers, it's especially hard for them. Um, so um, a lot of the advocates I know didn't remember until later. I, I go into that more of how my life is different and better, you know, I talk about that in the essay. Um, and so it's called psychological benefits of delayed recall, but I 
I just think there's a lot of pos positives in my life because of um, what I did before I remembered. Yeah, I was able to have a functional younger life. That's very sweet, Jay. I'm so sorry for everyone for the losses we suffer. Yes. Oh. Someone is saying took me 47 years. And um, when you see my films, both of my feature length personal documentaries, um, Lynn Crook is in them and she didn't remember until she was 45. And she was, she was working at a Ray Price's center. Um, and she wondered why she, she had, um, I don't remember what it was fainting or something when she'd be in cert, certain settings. And that's what she went in for. And, and uh, she went to counseling and her counselor said, were you ever sexually abused? Or she told you know, she, she said, my father made me quit having periods and that sounded suspicious. And the therapist said, were you ever sexually abused? And she said, no, no, I wasn't. And then later, I think that evening or a couple of days later, she remembered. Yeah, I, I'm, yes, I'm so glad to have a happy life now. I'm so glad to have a happy life now. Um, and I, I really like to say that a lot because recovery is possible. And I didn't think I would ever recover to the extent I am now. I, I didn't think I'd ever be so happy. And I've just recently, I've always been worried about money. And recently I've started, uh, psycho, I've gone back to doing psychotherapy and I, I'm not, it's like, oh, you know, I bought, I needed some new socks and I bought, I spent fifty dollars on socks. I mean, it was five pair, but still, I mean, it was like, or telling myself, "Yes, I can afford." So I have some flowers. Oh, I should have put them behind me. But anyway, um, you know, buying flowers, just doing little things like that. Um, but just like, I'm gonna buy some pottery. I'm excited about this. <laughs> but um, I have um, I, my husband built open shelves, so that was easier with rearranging the kitchen, having enough storage space to just have open shelves, but I'm going to buy some um, custom made pottery to go on those shelves. And um, I'm just really excited about that. I know it's a, you know, fairly small thing. And I found a potter who's very reasonable in prices, but um, to get custom made pottery and then you can see it from those open shelves. I'm, I'm very excited. Um, okay. Other people are saying they were older when they remembered. Yeah. Thank you. Red ritual treat yourself. Yes, I am. Oh, and someone mentioned, and I, I think um, different survivors feel very differently about God and about religion, but um, don't I, I, I appreciate that you shared that, that, that was, and is helpful to you. Do you think a mother's failure to protect the child can have a similar effect as it would if she had molested the child herself? Yes, I do. Yes, I absolutely do. Yes. The failure to protect um yeah that your mother had knowledge of it is is just devastating yeah it, it can have a similar effect and i didn't mean i you know i'm glad you mentioned that um sunshine um was that i didn't mean to call out like molestation by mothers as being i mean there's all different ways people are abused. And uh, Lynn Crook's an example of someone who was abused by her father. She was not, that was her only perpetrator. And, um, you know, she's, and she, I mean, it's affected her a great deal. Um, so, um, yeah, abuse by anyone, molestation by anyone can give you the impression you don't have ownership over your own body. 
I'm, I'm glad you brought me back to that because I didn't mean to call out one type of abuse as being worse than others. Um, and any abuse of a child, and especially by someone who should be protecting you, any abuse of a child by someone who should be protecting you. Um, yeah, it's tends to be not as traumatic if it was abuse by a non-relative and your parents, I mean, and your parents believed you right away and supported you. I mean, that's not the, yeah. Um, okay. I can read from, oh. yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sunshine. Um, I I just I really believe any sexual abuse it's it's such an invasion of your body. Any sexual abuse can be um, extremely traumatic, and it and it just varies from one person to another. Um, yeah, I remember reading a book by someone who was a nun in South America and she had been kidnapped and her abuse lasted 24 hours. And I mean, it just changed her life so much. And, um, you know, while it was horrendous, it just, it lasted 24 hours. So um, it, and she was an adult and her parents, the people around her, everyone, uh, supported her as soon as she was um, ex escaped the uh, uh, person who was abusing her. So, yeah. Okay, I'll read a little from How I Know My Childhood Memories Are True. And in it, I have caution for survivors. Don't judge yourself harshly if you don't have as much corroboration of your memories as I do most survivors don't. Remember that the most important things in life can never be proven in a court of law. But I have one thing I have is general health. I got well after experience, almost continuous pain from my earliest memories. I am now pain free. I thought everyone was like me until I was 32. I asked the other moms of toddlers who were in a play group with me and found out they didn't suffer from pain every day. I then went to a doctor and was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, which I no longer have. So yeah, getting well makes so much difference. I, I have I do have a couple of parts of my body that I still have pain on um, my right hip, my right shoulder, but it's not um, and that and those are healing. And those are healing. So um, healing is, I just want you to know healing is possible. And um, how I think about healing work is that it's like a part-time job and the check is in the mail. It will pay off, but not immediately. Um Oh, here's another one that may apply to many of you. A lack of motivation to falsely accuse. Recovering memories of child abuse did not result in my financial gain. In fact, I was disinherited by my father, a multimillionaire. Even so, I am glad I remembered what he did and had, and that I confronted him before he died. Now, I'm not saying other people need to confront, but that's my own situation. And, um, but you know, there, I just had no motivation to falsely accuse someone. Um, Donna, I have a few memories, but I am 100% sure my uncle lost me during childhood. Can this be? My body reacts and knows. Can this be? Oh, I think you're asking yourself, can this be? And... Um, yeah, I, 
Yeah. Um, I had to ask myself. And that's really what I did in making the documentary. Am I crazy? My journey to determine if my memories are true. That's why I put myself through that was that was a way I tested myself. I do not recommend testing yourself in that way. I, I know I'm, there were so many either uh, easier ways I could have um, done that and, and less expensive. The film was very expensive to make. Oh, another way I know my memories are true is the reaction of my perpetrators. None of my abusers reacted with love. There's a movie, All the Pretty Horses, and um, the female lead says, I never knew my father could quit loving me. And that just really resonates with me. Like, I thought my father loved me. And then um, when I remembered the some non-sexual abuse, and respectfully asked my dad to go to a counselor with me. He replied, is this going to lead you to think I sexually abused you? And I won't be seeing you again. Um, okay. Becky, this might not apply, but I'm curious. I'm extremely afraid of having my own children. How was your experience with motherhood? Were you afraid of not being good enough? Oh, Becky, I, I was afraid, but I look back and I just know I was such a good mother and I know other survivors who are such good parents. Um, I don't think, I, I don't know your exact situation, what symptoms you have, um, but as far as, so I, I'll just speak for me, I, you know, I treasure that time. I just, last week I was at farmer's market and I was, you know, eating lunch there. And there was this group, um, like three quilt war, <laughs> people had put quilts down and it was a play group for children under one year old. And so you saw all these moms with these little babies and, you know, um, the, they were all much younger than toddler age. And I just remembered how much I enjoyed parenting. Um, I will say, well, I've said it publicly, so I'll say here, my sons do not believe that I was abused as a child. And that is the hardest thing that I deal with. That is the hardest thing I deal with, that they don't believe me. Um, I think they were influenced by my ex-husband, but they're grown men and, and they don't believe me. And it, it's very hurtful. They won't, they don't want to hear about my films, my memoir. Um, I feel like there's whole parts of my life that I, I can't share with them. And, um, and that's very sad to me. And uh, so I don't, I don't want to seem like I'm commercial. Have babies. It's a great thing. There's really hard things about being a parent. But that's for everyone. I think anyone who has become a parent has wondered if they were, um, if they would be good at it. Oh, I'm afraid to have. Yeah, because I just, because you, you're you afraid you'd re-traumatize them or not be able to show love properly. Well, I'm going to share something that um, one of the tapes, I used to, my counselor gave me tapes by uh, Renee Fredrickson. And I got counseling during the time that counselors were trained that you don't do anything, you don't ask leading questions and all of that. But Renee Fredrickson was kind of ahead of that, or at least her um, ahead of that time. And she was like, if you think, you know, if you think you're abused, then believe yourself. And um, kind of like um, Courage to Heal, the authors of that, that's what they said. And in their 25th anniversary edition, they have, they've 
been more like examine, you know, carefully examine and, uh, and, and different things to look at as you're deciding whether to remember. But anyway, Renee Fredrickson was giving this talk that I used to listen to the tapes. Um, this was a long time ago. It was in the 90s when I had a tape player in my car. And she, she was lecturing to this group. And there was a question about being a good enough parent. And she said, okay, all of you in here are survivors. It was just, it was a group of survivors. You are too hard on yourself as a parent. Survivors tend to be really hard on themselves as a parent. And survivors tend to be really good parents. But you, you know, you think that it, it's not, if you look back at your childhood, it wasn't one little thing that your parents did wrong that caused you all this problem. It really wasn't one little thing. It wasn't, um, you know, whether they let you have the lunchbox you wanted to take to school or something. It wasn't something like that. It wasn't small. Um, it it probably wasn't a one-time spanking even, even though I'm totally opposed to spanking children. I do not believe in physical discipline of children. But um, yeah, it, it, survivors tend to be such loving people. So really, you know, talk to the people you're around about would you be a good mom? Not, um, don't, yeah, don't rule it out because you're a survivor. I mean, you lost so much of your childhood, don't make yourself lose things as an adult. That's, yeah, that's my advice on, on it. My mom stopped loving me when I started talking at age 40, yeah. And my uncle was the brother of my father. She had divorced, wow. That's so hard, that is so hard. Yeah, how would they know they weren't even there? Yeah, and I think that about my sons. I mean, how, it's absurd. Like, no one cares what my sons think about my childhood. They were not born yet, you know? But, uh, I mean, it's hurtful to me, but but it's not like they could confirm or deny it because they didn't exist at the time. Oh, I like the support red rituals giving to Becky. That's great. Yeah, the response of abusers is so weird. Oh, I'm glad it's comforting that I enjoyed parenthood. I, yeah, I, I really, there were such good times. And I do get to see my grandchildren. Um, my sons won't let me babysit with them because they're afraid, apparently they're afraid that I will tell them about my abuse. And I found that out in a roundabout way. But I, it seems like they should have just said, don't tell our kids about your abuse. You know, I mean, that would be more effective um, because I'm still around them. If I wanted to say something, I could, but I don't. So, yeah, I enjoy my grandkids. I do enjoy my grandkids. Oh, my ma mother stopped loving me at age 12 when I brought it up as a possibility. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah, so much gaslighting. I just, I watched that movie about gaslighting. I, it's this really old movie and I, people use that term and I didn't really exactly understand it until I watched the movie. Um, I, I, it was free. I think it was maybe free on YouTube or, anyway, I know I didn't, it was in one of my streaming services. I think it's called Gaslighting. Yeah, very sad that my sons don't believe me. Yeah. Oh, Becky, you're 23. Yes, you have lots of time. Yeah, it, and I will emphasize again, any reasonable person, any normal person, it's just really scary to become a parent. I mean, what a responsibility. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Yeah. People. Yeah, it is. Oh, your own therapist tried to tell you you were wrong. Oh, boyfriends. Yeah. Oh yeah. You like, and uh, Jay says you like Renee Fredrickson. Yeah. I got to hear her in a Q and a, but the person doing the Q and a wouldn't let the people watching ask questions. I didn't get to any other books with her. Um, I, I believe that my abusers, I, well, I don't know about all my abusers, if they were abused as children, but um, my father was abused as a child. I know that from my aunt and from him, he's told me um, he was abused by someone like a scoutmaster and he was uh, sexually abused by a female babysitter when he was about like five years old. And I know for a fact that my father, father that my mother had sex with her father um i that's one of my highly triggering um in my memoir so i'm not going to say more about that but but i know that's true but you know like i was abused as a child and i haven't abused a child so um uh most people who are abused as children never abuse a child i mean most people I I do think most child abusers were abused as children, but if you look at it the other way, a very low percentage of people who were abused as children abuse ever abuse a child. And one one statistics I've heard is um, the typical pedophile has like two hundred victims, but I mean that's why the those percentages can work out that way that pedophiles um, usually abuse a lot of children. Yeah, I read rituals said most of my family doesn't believe, but I know it's their own defenses, yeah. Well, I don't know, uh, I, I'll just tell you, um, there's not a question up right now. Ask question if you want, but I'll, I'll just tell you about um, my day today. And um, I'm going to go to a writing. Um, it's on my, I think I have it on. Yeah, I have it on my Facebook page. It's um, a writing group for survivors. And I don't know if you can still get into today's, but it's monthly. I've heard it's really good. So I'm excited about that. I do that later today. Um, I am going to yoga later today. I do yoga multiple times a week. Um, and, um, and then tomorrow, my older son who lives out of state is coming and I'll get to see my grandkids. We're going to do... Um, I'm going to do an Easter egg hunt because I didn't see them at Easter, even though I sent them these Easter eggs. But um, I, I, if it's an eggshell, I took the inside out of the egg and washed it out and everything. And then I put money in the egg and um, I'll have those hiding in the backyard um, when they get here tomorrow. I um, I think in order to be happy, one thing I've noticed, like, I like what I'm doing today. So it was easy to wake up happy. And so you just, you have to have some happy, fun things in your life, um, like art. And um, I'm thinking about taking, I've taken art lessons before, and I'm thinking about taking them again. But I got happy last night when, so I, it was a little bit laborious, um, getting the eggs, you know, getting the insides out of the eggs, washing the inside of the egg, turning it over, letting it dry. And, you know, that, that took a little while because I, I have, uh, I wanted to have, well, I'm, I have three grandchildren coming tomorrow and I wanted to have enough for them to each have seven. So that's quite a few eggs. But um, last night I started painting the eggs. So I have, I used red, it was supposed to be pink, but it turned out it, I, the color was more red. 
And then I have a turquoise blue and uh, kind of um, purplish pink. And so each child has a different color. So they'll pick their color and then they can go. And, and each egg has a dollar in it. Um, but one has two dollars in it. So one, so each child will get what, um, seven eggs. So each child will get eight dollars. And um, anyway, I'm just, it, it was so fun painting those eggs. Um, so yeah, I be sure and leave time in your schedule for fun. One a client I had on Friday said she is going to write out times on her schedule, on her calendar for these fun activities. And I recommend um, that you have, um, I recommend, well, and this is from The Artist's Way. There's a book, The Artist's Way, which you will be able to find at most libraries. Um, and it's written by Julia Cameron. And she, um, she suggests you have an artist date every week, which is taking your younger self, your younger, she, it, the, the book is on unlocking creativity. And, and it was helpful to me. It's one reason I made films eventually. But um, to take yourself somewhere um, at least once a week should be an excursion that's more than an hour and uh, should be something that would be fun for your younger self. And um, like I've done things like go to a doll shop or farmer's market last Thursday was, was an artist date for me. Um, I made sure I came back with some flowers. Uh, some people who have trouble with spending money just need their artist date to be window shopping going or going to a museum. Um, one of my clients, is, she likes to make fairy houses, which is just using um, things you would find out in the woods to make a little house um, and with leaves and twigs and all. So, you know, you find what is happening a happy thing to you and do it and do it at least once a week. And she recommends doing it alone. I have, sometimes I'll take someone with me and do an artist date together. And, you know, and, and that's good too. That's fine too. But, but initially I would always do them alone and, oh, they really help. And then when I'm not as happy as I'd like to be, I do it again. And it, it makes a huge difference. Um, and the other thing she recommends is journaling every morning. She recommends before your feet hit the floor. And if you are wanting to regain memories, that is a more likely way. If you do it while you're almost still in that sleep state and you just write down um, what comes to mind for 15 minutes right after waking up. Well, we are almost an hour now, so I don't see any. I was going to go longer if some people came in and had questions, but um, oh, Donna said, I love being alone. That's so peaceful. It is, yes. And um, it, did anyone here have something you want to talk to me privately about? If you do put that in chat and I'll make arrangements right now. But otherwise, I think it's time to wrap it up because it has been, well, it's been an hour because I started early. So I've, I've been doing this for an hour. Oh, uh, oh, Donna, you, you want to talk to me privately. Okay. Well, um, uh, email me and I'll set it up for you and I'll set it up just right away after this. Okay, bye Elisha. Oh, Becky, go ahead and ask. I, I got some more time, Becky. Go ahead and ask questions. Thanks, Sunshine. 
and yeah, Donna, Donna's gonna, um, oh, oh yeah, if, uh, if uh, someone else wants to email me, you see my email there, and um, I will, I have, I have the next like 45 minutes. So I have time to talk to more than one person. And um, Becky, did you have some more questions right now? If not, I'm going to end because you're the only one who said you might. Well, this has been really good. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And um, yeah, and I'll, I'll do this again. I mean to do, I meant to do one in July and I didn't. But I, I will, um, uh, I plan to do this monthly. So um, if there's a time that works better than this time, let me know, because um, I can change around the times. But today, this, um, you know, this was a good time to do it. Uh, someone contacted me. I don't know if that person came, a 14-year-old from Bangladesh. So if you're here, let me know. Okay, Becky. Becky is wondering how to manage complex PTSD. Um, okay. Yes, uh-huh, that's a good question, Becky, and I think other people are wanting to hear. Um, so my symptoms are not severe now. Um, and I, I, in my book, I do have the longest essay is how I healed. Um, I'm going to read some things from that. Um, and it's how I healed from fibromyalgia, but it, it's the same things that would help with complex PTSD. Um, so one thing I do, and I still do, is I get plenty of sleep. I sleep nine hours a night. I I just need it and I do it. I do take antidepressants. I know that's controversial. Some people don't want to do that, but that has been helpful for me. And I realized for me, it was kind of an ego thing. Like I don't want to think that I can handle life without antidepressants, but I, I'm still on them now. Um, I've been on higher doses than I am now, but um so, you know, you can lower a dose or whatever. Um, and I just go to my, um, I just go to my medical doctor. I haven't ever gone to a psychiatrist, but if you are under other medications, you probably will need to go to a psychiatrist. Another really simple thing is eating healthy. I mean, I know that's really simple, but I had to do that for the fibromyalgia. So maybe you won't if, if you don't, um, that may be specific to the fibromyalgia, to the chronic pain. And exercise. Um, and exercise helps me not just physically, but mentally. Like my husband and I went on a walk last night. I was getting stressed out because of the complicated relationship I have with my son and that he's coming. I were, was not suicidal. Uh, before taking meds, I, the only time I was suicidal was when I was about seven years old and I thought about how to kill myself, uh, like on a bike, riding a bike off a cliff. And, um, but as an adult, I haven't been. Um, and, you know, each person's different. Many people who have experienced abuse have problems with suicide, suicidal ideation. Oh, someone's, yeah, there are alternatives to antidepressants. And I guess I should say, this is not a medical, you know, we're not giving medical advice. Oh, yes. Okay. I, uh, yeah, I, I really recommend my uh, book for you, Becky, because that's, it's got, I mean, it's got pages and pages on what helped me with fibromyalgia. And the same things. I mean, I don't separate what helped me with um, with um, fibromyalgia versus what helped me with complex PTSD. 
Um, but part of it, I've already talked about having fun. Um, spirituality has helped me. I meditation CDs. Um, but yeah, I go into, I'm just going to say what well, psychotherapy has been essential for me. Um, but I'll go into one more thing, which is support groups. You need a way to have support with other people who are truly supportive, not judgmental. And um, one group that has been helpful to me is Al-Anon, 12-step groups. Um, it's like AA, like Alcoholics Anonymous, but it's it's um, for people who were affected by alcohol uh, by alcoholics basically so um and but really it's for people th from any dysfunction any dysfunctional family and i have found support within that group so um i recommend get getting some group whether some people find a church group being helpful i've been in domestic violence groups for women that have been helpful um i've been in grief Groups, social media is sometimes helpful. Um, I am in some private Facebook groups. If you email me, I can let you know more about that. Um, and um, oh, I'll mention one more thing because we're talking about fibromyalgia, but physical therapy has been so helpful to me, including I've had pelvic floor physical therapy. And there's, I have um, film clips about it. Um, so rather than take time explaining it, it's, it's on my YouTube channel, but, um, I found pelvic floor physical therapist, especially helpful. So, um, anyway, that, that has been a part of my healing. Um, and, and it's really helped me psychologically as well. I mean, I, the mind and body are connected and so something that helps with one will help with the other saunas and steam yeah some people that helps steam although steam could get me in a real uh fight or flight kind of thing because of some of the abuse i experienced so everyone's different on that oh good oh good becky you're gonna get my book yay i love it when people get my book i've worked so hard on that good okay and um, yeah, uh, massages, I get massages and they're hard to afford, but um, I just, I just got one. I just got one Friday. I, I get them at least once a month. Um, okay. So I, any last questions and then we're going to end. Okay, it was so good to talk to all of you. It was just really good. Thank you for being here. And I really have enjoyed getting to know you. Um, thank you, Elijah. Thank you, each of you.